Everybody, I've decided to go live. Um, I'm up here on the Cosmic Camper. I got a different, slightly different view. But, you can um, see Mexico from here. No, you can't see Mexico from here. Yeah, Mexico's about three miles south. You can't see it from here. That's uh, that's uh, that's not the Rio Grande there, so it's no. it's beyond what we can see. Right. Okay. So you can't see Mexico from here. Um, well, but uh, down there you can. You apparently, can see. I went live because uh, we're looking at this uh, GSC four here, and uh, Cosmic Camper was saying that we. Um, Professor Jim, we might see uh, the base of it get taken out. They're torching it now, maybe. Um, so I went live just to, uh, in honor of the Cosmic Camper, Professor Jim here. And we, lo we love Ocean Cam. Don't sit in anymore. Oh, it, it's wonderful. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to let him speak anymore. Hey, Tony. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just excited. We can see here also that they're doing some concrete cement work. Uh, I don't see anything currently, but uh, this is the first time I got this view from above after they've uh, done a bunch of this pad. Tony says hello. But we can see here, this area has been concreted over. That was not done before. And there remains a small sliver here to the left for them to do some work on. But this is, I believe, a speakerless, uh, not so much speaking on this live stream here. And I'll just kind of keep a zoomed out view of what's going on here and enjoy the show myself. Ocean Camera has a passion to do this. It's not work. It's, That's true. It's just so a, don't even mention it. Okay. <laughs> Hey Gator, nice. I'm sitting in a chair now. I wasn't sitting in a chair. Is the SPMT over there? I don't see any. I don't see any SPMT. The other day, but it's gone. Yeah, I don't see any SPMTs over there. Right. Hey Bourbon, thanks man. I'm sitting down right now, guys, and we have a we have an, a a higher view than we did before, so it is. Uh, the and it's a, view, it's a sunny spot, day today also. The greatest spot that we can find. Yep. That is true, actually. <laughs> you want to say that again? Let me, just a minute. Yeah, we're up high here on, on the camper, and we're above the fence. We can see a long ways away, almost Mexico. And uh, it's just a wonderful viewpoint. And we're right between the booster and the starship. It's just a wonderful place to be. A little breeze today. The ocean's here on the oh, yeah. 100 yards. Yeah, that's fine. They, they know that. Thank you. We got some view of the uh, overlaunch platform, everybody. But uh, I am sitting down. I had something to drink, some water. We're talking about the weight of water 8.3 something pounds per gallon. And. Uh, it's good to be sitting down on a chair here with a better view. I'll get a shot here to the left also. They, there are a bunch of tankers over there at the tank farm. A little venting down here on the, on the right. Booster 4 is, uh, no, Booster 4 is still here to the right. Sorry about that, misdirection. Booster 4, the suborbital pads A and B are there to the far right. I'll use my hand. Um, this is pad A and this is pad B. So booster four is still on the uh, test end and they have, they hooked up the load spreader earlier just, uh, just in the last hour and a half. So I want to get the shot here to the left. Live stream going from the remote camera, you can go back in that, or I did a previous live stream just before this from over there on the, on the main gate. 
if you wanted to see the hooking up of the booster, we're seeing here, um, we got two truckers over there. I don't know if it was liquid nitrogen or, or oxygen, but, and then the other one, I believe the red one, white, red, white one is a vacuum truck, maybe possibly for vacuuming the, uh, the stuff out. But, um, so that is going on as well. There is some venting over at the suborbital tank farm. It seems I'm going back and forth here with the view, but I get some shots at the tank farm, orbital tank farm here. This is orbital because it's gonna go up into space, but the suborbital tank farm over by pad A and B, we're going there now, is uh, there is some venting over there as well. You can see it there in the distance, just to the left of the hoppy. This solar panel makes a nice windbreak. Yeah, it does. That's cool. I see your panel's gone. Yeah, I put it on the. Did you get your operation? Oh, oh yeah, I got it going. Yeah, oh, yeah. I seen it yet. Yeah. Well, um, it is a muddy and big puddles of water to get there. I have, I have some boots. Ocean cam number two? No, it's um, just my boots. I put I put on my boots and walk out to it. But how do you, uh, if I want to see it on the internet? Oh yeah, okay, I can show you. It's Take a look. It's a uh, ocean cam, ocean cam. Okay, just a minute. All right, let's see. Um, yeah, is oh, that's where we are, right? Uh, what's this one here? Oh, that's a live cam, huh? Here we go. That's it right there. Yeah. And it looks like the uh, methane tanks are far enough away from this angle. Um, which I which mean, tanks? It seems like the. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And I, it looks to me here. It looks like the, the Starship is going to hit the. Uh, the, the chopsticks, but it isn't. Okay. It's far enough away you can see there's a gap between the chopsticks and the. Uh, I don't know. We'll take a look. Got to make money, right? So <laughs> you have to watch the ad first. <laughs> I just yeah. All right, everybody. Let me see here. This is a yeah. They are removing the berm, but they did truck in some some soil recently. They just I saw a truck coming in. The, team, the B team adventures. Um, so they are bringing soil in it in addition to trucking it out. So um, it, it is pretty interesting. But uh, this is uh, around lunchtime here. So I'm sitting down, chilling out, and uh, I'm kind of watching the view and I'm chatting with Cosmic Professor Jim here. So, how's that look? Yeah, you can see how there's a gap between the arms and the rock, although it looks like it's so close here from this angle, cool, cool. but there's enough room there to get it through. It's a huge motion from the wind. Yeah. It, is it windy out there? Probably? Yeah, it is. It is. A bit. Yeah. yeah. See, these, keep, that, these Russians keep posting um, spam in the chat, so. Right. If I were not live streaming, I would be blocking that person right now. Right. Yeah. That's pretty nice, man. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice view. I like the angle. Yeah. So everybody, there is a zoomed out view happening right now. Um, yeah, right, Tony. Yeah, two streams, right? Second. Yep. Awesome, Tony. I have a lift coming by here. Yeah. There's a lift coming by the road here in front of us. It'll be kind of loud for a moment. Yeah. There's going to be yeah. a loud engine here. It's probably got it in high gear. Oh, yeah. It's just a slow moving Yeah.
We can jump off of here onto there. We can. We might miss it. Not me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to to so save your way down. if you had to save your life, you could make that. Yeah, if you really yeah. jump yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> Grab onto the yellow piece or something. <laughs> Yeah, Tony, we, we could have made it if we did a running jump and if our life depended on it, we could have made that jump. Let me do something here. I want to. I want to. Oh, so those of you looking, um, I will get a shot of the SPMT controls when I get another opportunity. Uh, someone yesterday requested to see. You know, the, the man was walking behind the SPMT yesterday, joystick and everything, and I never really zoomed in on the SPMT, um, on, I mean, on the joystick a couple days ago, I, th I believe it was. Uh, so I do have that on my repertoire to take uh, video and photographs of the uh, controls that the, the operator that walks behind the SPMT uses to maneuver the vehicle. Yeah, Skylab, we are on the roof of Jim's uh, Cosmic Professor Camper here. We're about um, 15 feet up or so. You want to talk about your RV? Yeah. Uh, we got a Lance a camper. Little, it's a truck camper. Yeah, a little bit away. And uh, yeah, it's perfect for me. We got 800 watts of solar on here so we can keep things charged up and I'm off the grid. But uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful day, catching some sunshine, and we're just admiring all of the fascinating stuff, and we're so close. They let us right across the road from SpaceX. It's wonderful to be here on Groundhog's Day. What is about noon? What time is it here? And uh, It's around noon. 
Yeah, it's around noon. Just sitting out here on the top of his RV. Yeah, we got the good life going here. Good. All right. Yeah, it's, it's right at noon, 12.01 in uh, Central Time Zone here in Brownsville, Starbase, Texas, on Groundhog's Day at noon. High noon. We're at high noon because we're high up. We're about as high as anybody. Uh, well, we're not as high as anybody, but we're pretty well, high up. We're pretty high up. Anybody <laughs> out here? Anybody out here? I'm the, referring to height. Because uh, over on the star base, yes, people are, can be higher, but, <laughs> but not here. And we don't know if the groundhog saw his shadow. We are not high as a kite right now, that is for sure. <laughs> a, a, a small kite. We, a, a kite that was just getting off the ground. I'm not referring to a kite, man. <laughs> no, we're not high. We're just up on above ground. But elevated. We have a higher elevation than uh, anybody out on this side of the road. Six more weeks, uh, says... Uh, Is it six more weeks of winter? Jimmy. Yep, six more weeks. So that means he did not, he he did see a shadow. Oh, yeah. I believe he saw a shadow then. Punks to Tony Phil, huh? Yep. Groundhog Day. You, you live it over and over and over again. What a great movie. Thanks, Skylab. Said true professionals. Yep, true professionals. And the crane is now hooked up to the booster, yeah. but it's not being elevated yet. They did disconnect the... Uh, hey, long, They did disconnect the um, grid fins earlier. They did have them tied down, but they... Yeah. They boost them up. Hey, long, Etienne, awesome. I don't know if uh, some of y'all don't know. I, I believe this is the Etienne from Instagram, but there's a lady over there that makes really nice diagrams and everything. I believe it's Etienne, but uh, let me know if that's not correct. But yeah, there's somebody on Instagram that makes some really good images. George, Robert. Yeah, everything's good here, Robert. Thanks. Are we having fun yet? Yes. No, it's not you. Great. Okay. Thanks, Etienne. And they set up some scaffolding over here. There must be uh, to build another wall. Yeah, I believe and so, you too. you see all these concrete blocks here? I pointed these, out this morning. These yeah. are large concrete blocks yeah. there to yeah. uh, install another wall, maybe. Yep. Around those methane tanks. So this is the uh, this is the lunchtime break here. Everything is uh, died down for about the next half hour, but it will pick up again in about 20 or so minutes. We'll get some shots here to the left after. Looks like that vehicle is going to pull into the main oh, gate yeah. there. There he goes. Feels so good to have sunlight out here, man. Oh, wow. this is great. Yep. Yeah, what a beautiful day. The solar panels, a windbreak. Yep. And Paul has a nice little windsock over his microphone. Yeah, they call it a dead cat, I believe. <laughs> you think that's what it is, the tail? This is an artificial one, not a real one. <laughs> a wild cat. It's a wild cat. A wild cat. From China, right? <laughs> Ship a lot of stuff out of China, everybody. I see people up on the launch platform there earlier, and now they're down yeah. below there. Yeah. And there's some other guys above the speakers over here on the crane. Yeah, I got that too. Yeah. Here goes the nitrogen truck. 
and he's offloaded all his nitrogen. Oh, so everybody, this is a liquid oxygen tank over there at the tank farm. So they're offloading oxygen, everybody. Awesome. RGV is doing a flyover. All right, let us know when they get close, Stephen, and uh, I'll see if I can get RGV on camera. Of a bit of a traffic jam up there. That's a nice camera you got. Yeah. Yeah. There was a guy here named... Go ahead. Well, they, we have to uh, maybe get out in the morning again at the road closure holes. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah. I got out two days ago. I thought sure it was going to... Yeah, talk about that on the camera. Yeah, they had a road closure, but it was canceled on Monday. And then uh, Tuesday, it was the road closure, but it was also canceled. But I'm back. I'm back out here on Wednesday, so... It was canceled today, too. Yeah, yeah. Next closure is tomorrow. And tomorrow, possibly another road closure. So if they cancel it, but they may be doing more experiments. This is a giant science experiment. Testing whether we can launch a starship and bring the upper stage back along with the largest booster and upper stage ever made. 29 engines, I believe. You want to... You want to go on the chat to this stream and post your the name of your channel. You can't post a link, but you can post a name if you want to, for them to find you. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to be on uh, Cosmic Professor Jim. Yeah, you want to do a PhD or which one? You got to uh, make it easy. You know? I think it was Cosmic Professor Jim. PhD. Yeah. Okay. There's another tank here coming by. This one's a liquid nitrogen tanker. Oh, nitrogen coming in. Coming in. Anyway, I'll probably uh, add the uh, Cosmic Professor Jim's. Um... Can I step on this? Can I step? Well, well not really. No. Okay. It's, it's open. I'll add a link to his YouTube channel later on to the uh, description of this video. If you're not watching it live, there will be uh, a, a link to uh, Cosmic Jim's uh, YouTube channel. Hey, look at the growth subscriber base here. Yeah, call me Cosmic Professor. Here's, uh, here's Juan. Juan is passing by. Juan de la Garza. He's going to be coming in, maybe. Uh, he might come up here. Here he is. Nice. Coming in with the nice vehicle. I mean, that mean they're showing the uh, plates. Hey, Juan. Yeah, good. Good. Good to yeah. see you, man. Yeah, Professor Jim, PhD. Thanks, Dan. He's an engineer, actually. I wanted to get him to chat about his engineering. Thanks, uh, oh, Dan. So the name, the name apparently is Professor Jim, PhD with a period. Is the Robert says if everything goes well this month, we have a, we'll have a party. Yep. Okay, George asks, will they try to lift them tomorrow with the chopsticks? George, uh, that is a little bit too fast of a, a, a one-two punch there. No, I don't think they'll lift it tomorrow, but they may lift it off its uh, current sitting point place there. Um, it takes several days to do things here. Tony. Tony says, another shot of nitrogen is not too bad for a cosmic truck, right? George says, hey, Paul, will they try to park there? Remember some time ago. Uh, I'm not sure. Temperature, temporary flight restriction is 10,000 feet. All right. 
So uh, with RGV flying overhead, he's going to be up 10,000 feet off the ground, everybody. Uh, apparently, um, apparently, uh, there was a man here named Chris yesterday passing through like myself. We were both here at the during the road closure uh, in the morning uh, from 10 to noon. And um, he had a drone license and he was checking out the TFR yesterday and he was hoping that they wouldn't renew it and they did they did renew the temporary flight restriction because he had a drone ready to go. If they, if they didn't do it, if they made a mistake, he was going to send his drone up and get some drone footage. So if that TFR ever does not get renewed, someone may have the... Um, Someone may attempt to do it. I will not attempt to do it. I don't have a drone and I would never do something like that. But yeah, it, it's a legal gray area. And if you were in front of a judge, he would probably say, you should have known better. But um, yeah, he was considering doing it yesterday. They're still moving this berm around here somewhat. Yep. I salute to you also, Benoit, also in Quebec. Nice. Ben, thanks for saying hello, Ben. Thanks. Thanks for your insight and your info also through Twitter and the other ways. Thanks. Yeah, there is a, there may be a, I think there's a sign that says $10,000 fine if you fly a drone. But, um, yeah, if there were a video, a good title for a video, yeah, High in Space would be a good name, Robert, for a good for a new uh, that video would probably make a lot of money. Maybe uh, maybe someone could make that video already and not be in space. <laughs> high in space, yeah. Yeah, I was looking up planetary resources yesterday after oh, okay. you had uh, awesome. talked awesome. about it, awesome. Good. and they had sold out. They, yeah, they, they went to by another, consensus. Yeah, yeah, another Ethereum company. company. Yeah. Right, right. But I remember planetary resources as a big company years ago, but I didn't realize they had sold out. But, uh, they may have kept the the staff, but they they sold the company. Right. It may have been something like that. Right. Well, I think one of the astronauts were in on that too. Oh, okay. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember which one, but there was an astronaut that was involved with that. Okay. Thanks, Ali. You too, Tom. Have a good day, man. We're having a good day out here. I have to take my shirt off. I need to take a chain. Yeah. You already got a good tan. Yeah, just stay out here and come out here every day, you'll get a tan. Yeah, you got a good, good tan going there. That's from Michigan. They're predicting a foot of snow up there in the Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. What was a wet snow this morning? <laughs> then it's going to freeze. It'll be like solid rock. I'm going to call Joe and let him know I'm. Uh, What's your uh, relationship with Joe? You guys just friends or? Uh, yeah, he's a good buddy. Your business partners? Last, I met him here last year. Oh, okay, but, uh, oh, that's the connection. There you yeah, go. Yeah, okay. we, we got some good rocket parts. Cool. Yeah, if we had one of those high rises, that'd be great. We could, uh, we could get a. Another shot looking down, yeah. Hmm. Yep. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, Joe's thinking of coming back. But, uh, oh, yeah. He's not coming back maybe for another week or two. Well, 
He's got a house in Florida. Right. But yeah, I wasn't watching the ocean cam this morning, and he said, hey, check it out. There's a, They're hooking the crane, moving the crane. So right, right. I got out here. Cool. Can you... Uh, so there's a live stream from the Nikon P1000 camera, and um, Jim here is telling me that this morning they were checking it out and they could see that the crane was moving. So we're gonna check it out here on the on his phone and see what that looks like. We get this shot here. Might as well keep this shot while we um, keep it interesting. If there's something anyone would like to see, let us know. I'll move the camera. Once the, once the lunch time is over here, in about another 10 minutes, uh, it might get more active here on site. So about another nine, 10 minutes to go. Google, can I? This is this morning, right? No, that's right now, I think. Right now? I think it's it's a little too foggy. Really? It's All right. All right, so the fog has increased, or the... Yeah, I didn't think there was that much fog. But it has increased, well. Yeah, so the, the clouds move in and move out, everybody. Um, pretty awesome. So that is what it looks like right now. And it is uh, past lunchtime here. It's, uh, it, it is still during lunchtime, but it's later in the day. I look up at the tower and I see the clouds go by. It gives me a little bit of vertigo. Not too much, but I'm sitting down so I'm But yeah, it, it, it's... Uh, Hey, Lee, uh, yeah, I wonder if, I'm not sure if Elon checks any of the streams, but maybe. That's a good question. I wonder that myself. There is somebody here subscribed to this channel who calls himself Elon Musk, so I'm not sure if it's a lady <laughs> or a guy, but Elon does subscribe to the channel. Or a dog. It could be a dog. Could we be Elon's know. dog. There's, there's no evidence. Maybe Elon's dog subscribed in using the <laughs> YouTube account. Or maybe that's his uh, one of his relatives or somebody use, using his computer. There's not too many Elons. It was there. not me. I did not go to Elon's computer and subscribe to the Ocean Cam channel. So okay. It was not me. Okay, Oli, Oli, awesome. Oh, Elon has said that he watches some of the streams out here. Awesome. Yeah, maybe when he's not in Boca Chica, that would make sense. I would do that. Check it all out, just uh, see what's going on. I have been told, uh, I, you, some of you all probably heard this, me say this before, but I have been told that I get shots that are better than SpaceX's shots sometimes. So they like to watch the Ocean Cam channel to get the, 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 uh, the closer up, better shots. So for all y'all watching uh, that do work at SpaceX, I salute you and I congratulate you on the excellent work. And we appreciate SpaceX. Yeah, I don't say that. And Paul had a great view of a, of the uh, tank that popped the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a, uh, here at the... High pressure. Uh, one of the main shots here as you go to the, you, if you look around on the Ocean Cam YouTube channel, there is a, one of the first shots you'll see is the liquid nitrogen um, GSC-4 tank on the left. It, uh, this tank over here, way on the left, it popped when the, uh, and I got a shot of that from the main gate. So that is, uh, yep, you get some good shots here. I didn't think there was that much fog in the air, but. Yeah, there's a lot of fog out from the haze, distance. A lot of haze. Yeah. Purple haze. All he says, the SpaceX stream of the last launch was amazing. Now, was that a Falcon 9 launch or? Um, was that another launch? Riding the wave, that's right, Mike. Yeah. They put a fence up, but we're above the fence. <laughs> yeah, Ollie says uh, it's easier, say, maybe for Elon or somebody else just to tune into the stream than to call in to work to see what's going on here. There you go. That's pretty cool, Ollie. Thanks. That makes sense too, yeah. Falcon 9, okay, yeah, there was a, okay. All he says, the, it was the Falcon 9 launch on Monday. Okay. Cool. 
and the booster was saved. 104 now, I think. Oh, we're up to 104 on the boosters. Huh? Each one cost $63 million. Oh, well, each booster of the Falcon 9 cost $63 million. Oh. So he saved over $6 billion just in All booster right. cost. All right. So there are, if any of y'all are passing through um, Brownsville, Texas, on your way down here or to or from, we do have a bunch of solar panels which uh, are for sale, and you can find that on the Ocean Camp website in the store. I just reminded myself by looking at Jim here that he, he often tells me about, speaking about the solar panels. So we have um, about 31 uh, solar panels left. They are 400 watts. over a year old, uh, 430 something watts. And they go, or they're going for, if you pick them up in person, $250 cash. If you wanna buy it through eBay, it's $275 local pickup um, so we have that available if you'd like to um, soup up your uh, these are commercial rated solar panels so they really uh, they, they decrease at about 0.25 percent per year and they're get off the grid man you, you could get off the grid yeah uh, it's wonderful to be off the grid no more electric bill and we're saving the earth in one step at a time Ali says, uh, lives in, in England, England, England. Ground camps the whole time, huh? His uh, solar panels are one meter by two meters. That's the standard industrial size. One by two meters. Yeah, the, um, so the, the, the ocean cam bank account here, if we break out, if we break open the ocean camera space corp piggy bank, we have about $5 in the bank account. So when it comes to buying new equipment or new cord to new cable to stop the shaking of the remote camera here at Ocean Camera Space Corp, I'm going to have to defer to a later moment when I can put together the money to go out and buy $10 worth of cord. Paul has a passion. He's got a lot going on and he needs all the good equipment. Yeah, so uh, yes, I am riding the wave. We are riding the wave here together and we'll ride it as long as the wave goes. Oh, they're up at the speaker. Yeah, they're up there. Yeah, five dollars won't buy you much anymore today. <laughs> but we sure appreciate all the donations and all the all the support um, that we give Paul. He's out here most every day. Especially on nice days like this. The other day it was windy and rainy and cold. And I think it's supposed to cool down in a couple days. I think we're going to have a few degrees above freezing, uh, like 8 degrees Celsius, uh, in, in, a, in a few days. So it, it, it's really nice today, though. A little breeze, but not bad. We're right about eight, what, about 400 yards from the ocean, the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. Maybe 500 yards. Okay, let's see what time it is right now. It is 12.23 um, p.m. Uh, Birdman says the Falcon 9 launch of the NROL 87 will be at 3.18 Eastern time. So it's... Um, Right now it's 1.23 Eastern time, maybe 1.25 now. So in two hours, in just less than two hours, there'll be a Falcon 9 launch over there from Florida with some super secret um, uh, technology. Yeah, SpaceX is really going to town over there, putting a lot of satellites up right now. So T minus two hours and counting for the NROL launch. So we're just about done with lunchtime here. Um, 325 or 1225 is the magical time frame for when people come back. Oh, Vandenberg, Air Force Base, everybody from Vandenberg. Michael, thanks, Michael. 
Birdman Vandenberg Air Force Base. Thank you, Michael. California, everybody. Vandenberg, California. Thank you, Jimmy. If they let me on the base, then it would stick in my mind where it is, but they've never let me into Vandenberg Air Force Base, so all I can say is it is a secret place that I've never been to, and I don't know where it is. I think it's on the coast. I've been to, um, I saw two shuttle landings at uh, Edwards Air Force Base, but Vandenberg is the military uh, part. Apparently, Jimmy says, with an RTLS planned for landing zone four, LZ4. I know what LZ stands for, but uh, RTLS, I'm not sure what that means. Sounds good. Return to launch site. Ah, I got you. With a return to launch site planned for LZ landing zone number four. Jimmy, you're awesome. But Michael, thank you so much. Um, everybody, keeping the keeping the lights on and everything here. Thanks, Mike. Um, there is uh, several ways to donate here. We have um, in the description of this live stream, there's, um, there's a, a link to our financial statement here, the balance sheet. There's also a link to the GoFundMe. I updated the GoFundMe today because, um, you know, we got the remote camera going now. So uh, I changed the picture and I put the current picture that up there on the GoFundMe. I think it's a 10% fee on the GoFundMe so uh, if uh, if you wanted to really get the money to us uh, the PayPal is a very fast way to send money um, it takes about 30 days or so for the YouTube money to get to us and uh, I believe it's about a 30 30 percent fee but it's still good to have the uh, for the future um, and uh, so we do have PayPal as well the GoFundMe is awesome so I did I did an update of the uh, the uh, with that GoFundMe and um, for the future, some of the equipment that we're working on getting to. Maybe a second camera would be good to, or even two cameras, because then I could have the the Nikon here with me and and do some live streaming in 1080 um, and have another exterior uh, camera over there at the remote site. But um, it's working now. I get we. Today is day two of a pretty a, a live stream. I believe today's live stream, if we don't have any loss of signal, we'll continue on. Um, I did soup up and I upgraded the the camera system so that uh, the um, in addition to the computer being powered off the solar panels, the camera is now also powered off of the solar panel system. So um, can we figure out that hour shutdown? Yeah, it, uh, I, I believe uh, maybe it, maybe it wasn't a setting on the camera. It may have been just maybe something hitting the off button on the camera or okay. yeah, yeah. somehow yeah. something got loose. So I, I redid right. right. the container for the camera and um, it went to uh, over 12 hours yesterday. Awesome, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. it is overcast, yeah. Yeah, Scott, the crane is attached to the Booster 4, yes. San Diego. And it uh, says it's in the Philippines. It's 2:29 in the morning. Awesome. Mabuhay, San Diego. Mabuhay, Mabuhay. Yeah, Ethereum and uh, BTC. I can. Uh, there accept donations by crypto as well. Any crypto you want to send me, um, if it's not already in the description, I'll send you a. I'll send you a link. I'll post a link to uh, the wallet address. And, yeah, we accept Doge as well, yes. Nice, San Diego, yep. I had a, a Filipino friend, and he's still a friend, but he's over there in Hawaii, Hawaii. He's been to the Philippines several times, but he always liked to say, Mabu hi. And what does that mean? It's a greeting. Okay. It's a Filipino agreement. Mabuhay. Mabuhay. Yeah. 
I'm looking at Vandenberg Air Force Base here, just north of. They got San Diego, Los Angeles, and then Vandenberg. Oh, okay, northwest of Los Angeles, along the coast there. Is Straight out from Baker, Vandenberg Bakersfield. All right, so south, of, south of Fresno. Okay, so uh, where is Santa Monica? It's in Los Angeles, right? Yeah, yeah, right there. All right, so uh, what I can tell you all is what I've heard is that the the whole Long Beach area is. Uh, a massive secret space program location. Yeah, there's Long Beach. So it's no surprise to me that Vandenberg Air Force Base would also be out there on the coast. Yep. In the Santa Monica, Long Beach area, all that kind of area is the super secret uh, space space uh, program. They got tunnels all along, underneath the United States continent. So they launched submarines from, uh, I don't know where, but somewhere much further east uh, uh, in the in the Midwest area, they, they have submarines that they launch from uh, from like elevators that go down into the ground, and they launch it from like the Midwest. And it these elevator these submarines they travel underneath the the continental shelf of the United States, and they go out uh, westward. And so, no need to build the submarines on the West Coast. They just build them in the Midwest, and they they did. Elevator down to the uh, to the submarine and uh, Norfolk West or yeah West, Norfolk's Norfolk, on Virginia the East Coast has yeah. a, uh, a a big naval base along with Rhode Island. Uh, yeah, but there are naval bases where you don't know where they are. Right. And they're they're kind of in the areas where you didn't know there was any water. Right. Very far underneath the uh, the earth crust. Stephanie, good day. Yeah, um, Scott, yeah, I'm not sure where they're going to move it, but uh, it's thought that um, maybe they're going to keep it where it is and do a depressurization by opening one of the hatches is uh, the word here. They're not necessarily going to move it anywhere. Hey, Pork. Let's just keep that secret between you and us. Don't spread that secret around. <laughs> Got to keep it a secret, everybody. It's a secret theory. Yeah, okay, Stephanie agrees that uh, it may just stay where it is. They're, they may not be moving it anywhere, people. It's uh, maybe just uh, do, opening the hatch and, uh, so that it doesn't uh, cave in on itself. It was what I was hearing in the previous live stream uh, earlier this morning trailer today. Yeah, Joe's watching. Go. Hey, Joe, we appreciate you, man. Joe Smith in Florida. We're thinking of you, man. We wish you all the best. He's watching this one or the other one? Uh, he's watching this ask one. Ask him, maybe. ask which one is he watching? He's watching that one. Okay. This is just a test. I, I don't see him here in the chat. But Joe, if you're in the chat, say hello. Nice to see you here again. Joe. Yeah. I remember that last video. We, were, we had two live streams going in. You were watching the one, and he was on the other one. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a little bit compli complicated, but. Oh yeah, you think they're moving? Yeah, they're, I don't see any movement of the test tank, uh, the GSC-4 on the left there, but uh, maybe they will, and they might. Um, I believe maybe eventually they'll move it out of here, so maybe they'll bring it over there by SN-15 and 16 and store it over there. Cosmic connection, there we go. We just had a nitrogen tanker pass There's by. Cosmic connection, yep. there's Joe. Hey, Joe. Nice to see you. Joe was saying this morning that uh, it froze the other day around uh, Ocala and Tampa, where he's at, yeah. and uh, they lost some. Uh, oh, they some, lost of the some of the citrus grows, some froze of the up, huh? vegetation oh, there. Wow. Yeah, but uh, it's warming back up. We love Florida, man. All those people from Florida, we thank you. Stay warm down there. We don't want to get the people in Florida cooled off. Yeah, there's a big storm in Indiana and Michigan right now. I'm predicting a foot of snow in some places. Uh, yeah, Lee LaFunk, um, yeah, it, the Star Hopper could be a, kind of a trophy, but yeah, I don't know if they're going to move it into a cabinet or anything, but I, I was just remembering something that a man, gentleman yesterday named Chris was out here and um, he was telling me, sorry about that. He has a, um, 
a really nice, uh, he has a camera with like a telescope attached to it. And he could get a little bit, maybe a little bit better images than I can. His telescope was pretty big and he was attaching it to his camera. And he got some shots of the uh, catch arm here. And he was saying that these pieces, he, he showed me some pieces of uh, some pictures. The, the bottom of these, I believe the bottom of these catch arms um, rotate inward and outward. And those are the, I think, I believe, if not another location, those are the pins that attach to the starship. Uh, so these things rotate inward and outward and they do go into those holes just below the top flaps of the starship. These, this area here that we're looking at, just, um, we can't see the holes with this camera, but I believe the, uh, the I did see photos that Chris took. It may be these pieces that are hanging down there that rotate inward. If not, it, it is a, oh, those are stabilizer bars. If not, there's another set of things here on the chopsticks that rotate inward and outward and they fit into the uh, the holes just below the flaps of the starship or so I've been told I got one of the eyelets did I show you an eyelet rocket eyelets on the nose cone. Of these uh, things that they hang from? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I've gotten that too. So there's three tankers down there right now. I know one of them is an oxygen, I believe. The other one's a nitrogen, or or they may both be nitrogen, but yeah, we got three tankers over there right now. This is nitrogen on it, so one just backing up. And there's also a water tank. I don't know if that's a water tank or a vacuum truck. I've heard both. Well, you can see where the rust, where the water. Oh, you think that's rust? Okay, interesting. Yeah. All right. Stephanie says horns are for stability. Look about six rings down from the top of booster four. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've seen with the booster four there. I've I've taken close-up shots of the the bars that stick out on the side of the booster four. And with the straps on them, yeah. Okay, Stephanie says the Starship has lower points also. Interesting. Thanks, Steph. Good stuff. Yeah, we got the best spot. Yeah. Jim here has the best spot, everybody. When I came in this morning, I was parked near the ocean camera truck, but then I moved it back, back on here a little more. It's a perfect spot. Right between the booster and the Starship. Got a good view of the tank that they popped off here like a week ago. And um, it's, just, it's just a beautiful place to be and warm. I can hardly believe I'm here. Actually, it's it's so amazing that uh, we can get this close. Now, once they set up in Florida, they'll have the tower. They're building a tower down in Florida, and you won't be able to get within probably 20 miles of that one because it's back in the NASA complex in Titusville. On my way up north in about a month, I think I want to stop in at Houston Control. There, I was there years ago, but I'd kind of like to see what the display is there in Houston again. Why don't you tell us about your engineering and your studying and where you did that? Yeah, I went to Indiana University. Uh, actually, I had a, a physics degree also, but the PhD you is got, in... You got double, two degrees? Yeah, it's in uh, mechanical engineering is really the PhD. And what's the, what's the physics in? Just physics. You it's got just, a bachelor's and a two bachelors? Yeah. 
You got two bachelor's degrees and a PhD. What's your what year were you born? Are you a are you a Capricorn? We don't we don't talk about the age. Oh, okay. <laughs> what, what, what month are you born? I still feel good. April 29th oh, is April. a birthday. Yeah, You're I got an Yeah, I got a birthday coming up here in a few months. But um, yeah, Nathan was out there too. We love Nathan out at your place. He's uh, building some. Uh, he's building an image of uh, Elon Musk. He's a uh, router where he. he uh, it's pretty awesome what he's doing. But yeah, we uh, think a lot of Nathan. And uh, tell us a little about uh, MSX. Uh, we're the makers. The makers yeah, group. so Nathan is the CTO here at Ocean Camera Space Corp. Uh, Chief Technology Officer. He's also an engineer. So you didn't really tell us much about your I'm engineering. A, I'm a mechanical engineer. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's mechanical. But yeah, I can build most anything. I build a couple cars. I, I'm trying to be like Elon, but I, I didn't. Uh, I wasn't nearly as successful as Elon was. <laughs> That's like an entrepreneur. You got to go through a lot of failures to succeed. That's in right. I, I've had enough failures. <laughs> but no, it's been good. It's a good life. So you're 108 years old. Something like that. Okay, he's 108. Everybody. In months. How in many months? months? In months. 500 I months. Hey, Janus. Awesome. Now I'm gonna stay to you. Yes, stacking is not possible today because they uh, they they don't intend to stack it. But uh, it's a good good question. But they're getting it ready. Getting closer. Hey Stephanie, thanks. Stephanie says Starship 20 will probably get lifted with pins on the catch arms going into the sockets under the forward it's flaps. Possible. That's what I've been saying, Stephanie. The the pins underneath the low Underneath the the forward flaps. That's what I that's what I was saying. But uh, the 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 location on the catch arms where the pins are is what I was trying to get at. Because I saw some photos yesterday. And reading is so important. I teach reading. I'm a tutor. I also help people with motivation and math and reading. How old are these people that you teach? Uh, any age group. Uh, I've had college professors say, well, I can spell better now that I understand the words as sounds. Uh, yeah, I have three books on Amazon. Uh, Professor Jim's Reading Adventures. The first book is a beginning reading and the second book is advanced reading. And the third book is a meteor shower adventure. The idea is we're traveling at fantastic speed to go around the sun. We have to go all the way to the other side of the sun in 186 days to get back here in 365. Hey Graham, nice to see you. Awesome, welcome back. Yeah, so Janus, um, we're still we're still figuring out what they're doing here. Earlier today, there was some activity and. Now it uh, everybody's getting back from lunch. That's the big uh, that's the big event going on right now. They're always doing something here, but not sure what the next big thing that's going to happen is going to be. Um, they are attaching the GSC four there on the left to uh, looks like a Grove yellow Grove print. They got a lift up there. I don't see any people up on the orbital launch platform right now. Uh, I don't see any activity on the tower right now, but we do see the booster four is hooked up to the the um, the yellow, the white SpaceX crane, and um, the rest of the site is uh, active with people as well. They're moving some white piping from back on the left. There, you can see a white pipe being moved right now, and they are either unloading or loading. They're either loading up or unloading. So I think they're doing both of those, unloading one type of soil and taking away another type of soil. So there, there, was, a, there was a huge berm here side of these methane tanks, but now they've removed almost all of it. They're, yeah, they're loading the trucks up now with a little more of that dirt. They're doing a switcheroo with the dirt there. They're bringing in some nicer dirt or something and they're moving out some other, some other dirt. Awesome, Janus, uh, I would like to take you up on that. I had a... I had a, a flight to India a long time ago, and I did not, I did not have the, um, the visa. 
So I had to forfeit my ticket, my plane ticket. But maybe the next time I will uh, plan ahead and get the visa ahead of time. You flying into Mumbai? I don't know. Where, uh, where, what part of India am I invited to visit? My boy went to Mumbai. Okay, Tony said, um, Tony UG said they poured some concrete yesterday. Thanks, Tony. Uh, yeah, but I'd love to go to India. I've uh, studied, uh, I lived in the yoga ashram for four years. Um, in 1998 through 2001 or 2002, even a little bit into 2005. So I'm very familiar with the Hindu culture and the excellent, excellent yoga practices and beliefs and uh, vegetarian lifestyle. I love the, uh, I have broadened, I broadened my dietary stuff to include eggs. I still do eat some eggs. Um, chicken eggs, duck eggs, no, I eat eggs. But um, the rest of it, yeah, I'm mostly vegetarian besides that. I am. I, I do like honey, from raw honey from bees. So, so I'm not a vegan. I don't know what it's called, but I, I do like to eat the honey and also the eggs. And this is the second year, uh, second day into the new year, uh, the year of the tiger. And at the party, we had some duck. They had cooked up a All bunch right. of duck, right. barbecued it up, and it was wonderful. Cool, Punjab, awesome. Thanks, uh, Janice um, Babel. Babal, Babal, awesome. Northern India, awesome, good stuff. I, I believe a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, Buddhism uh, philosophy, the middle way. Yeah, I don't believe in the middle way, everybody. So you want to take the middle way. If you want to make progress in life, you can't coast on the middle. You gotta you gotta <laughs> you gotta take some risk. If you want to have a YouTube channel, if you want to do good in business, you're gonna have to get uncomfortable. If you don't want to, if you still, if you, you want to take, take the middle, middle way, way and and be progress. comfortable. You're not going to make much progress, everybody. You can make progress in the middle way. You can't make any progress on the middle way. Yeah, you can. No, you can't. If you want to, if you want to succeed, you got to get uncomfortable. And if you're relying on being in the middle way, you're going to have a sad realization because um, <laughs> there comes a point where you realize that the culture of the Earth is like an incubator. And if you want to make it outside of the incubator, you can't stay in the middle of the incubator. You oh, got to boy. get yourself out of the incubator and see what else is out there. Because the 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 rote and um, the rote and uh, learned reality of the universe is not taught in school. In the cosmos. And if you're going to maintain and and stay in the center of the group, you're not going to get out there and see anything new. So you got to. You gotta be a discoverer and you gotta get uncomfortable and the middle way is not gonna take you to where you wanna go. So well, I have a little different philosophy. Alright. This is the Ocean Camp channel, everybody. <laughs> 144 people watching. Oh, uh, we just dropped off about 30 people uh, with that discussion we had. Talking about. <laughs> oh, we got some music here. I'm going to have to mute the mic for a while.
Hey everybody, um, we have a, a car next to us that has a lot of music here, and I don't want to get a, a copyright strike, so I'm going to keep it on mute until he, he moves away or turns off his vehicle. All right, everybody, the, the vehicle has turned off its radio, so we're good to go. What I can tell you is I do not have, um, I have one camera over there at the remote site, and the other camera that I have, we're live streaming one with right now. If you would like to donate, I would be able to buy a second phone or a second laptop, and then I would be able to post links and do other stuff. But right now I'm limited by what I can do based on money and uh, based on resources and equipment so yeah I can't do any posting of any links or anything like that so hey San Diego nice There's many different emotion. types of Buddhism, right? Yes, but so. this is talking yeah. about sensual right. indulgence. That's wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. Get a view of the GSC-4 as well. I'm good. It's getting sunnier, everybody. It's getting sunnier. I can have a discussion with you about the, the Buddhist philosophy if you were talking about them. I would like to tell you something, though. Okay, I'm listening. All right, everybody. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, awareness in the universe. If there is only one awareness in the universe, right? Well, if say go with me, okay? Okay, all right. One, if there one, is only one awareness in the universe, one awareness. that awareness is in all the bodies simultaneously. Okay. That awareness was never created, was never destroyed. That awareness will never have children. Then you are that awareness in your body right now, right? It's in all the bodies. So that awareness cannot get any higher than it currently is. So the only thing that that awareness can do is it can move its perception within itself throughout the universe so that awareness can that awareness can experience the most subtle state without any without any without any form it can develop itself in all these different bodies to be able to perceive more or it can dull itself to perceive less okay but that awareness can never experience anything new it can only shift its awareness within the universe well, how are there new uh, new things aware? Uh, uh, aware new, of new new things? creations, new things uh, made out of the even the matter in the universe is still part of that one awareness. Okay. So everything is the one awareness. So the one awareness will exist forever. So 
the magical things that I see that that one awareness can do, it can change its perspective of the whole. That's great. But it can also collaborate with itself in the other bodies. So I'm more focused on the collaboration with other aspects, with, sure. other, with other forms that have my awareness in it. We're all interconnected. So I'm not really into the blissing out and going out into the universe and, and becoming the most subtle form and just without the body. So okay. if we look at the, if we were to draw a line on a sheet of paper and at one side of the line, at one extreme of the line, we were to put a dot, that would maybe represent us here in our physical bodies all throughout the universe, all of us are at one extreme of the uh, of that line. The other extreme, you could say, is the most subtle form of existence, which would be that undifferentiated, unmanifest awareness. Okay. So between those two two extremes of your own perception, you can live and experience anything that you want to experience. But at this moment in time, I, the I that is, the awareness, is currently inhabiting this body that I'm sitting in. Okay. So I've got nothing better to do than sit here and All right. be here on this live uh, stream and chat with you. Man, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm so, thankful that we're here. All right. The, 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 that is the universal uh, understanding of the knowledge of the universe. That's the theory. Now I have a little different. Uh, we don't want to hear you, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> I don't limit myself just to one experience. I think we're all in a uh, little different aspect. All right. Aspect I'll let him talk a little bit. I don't want to disregard yeah, his opinion. But his, his opinion doesn't really matter. <laughs> I believe that the middle way is more of a extremes you don't really want to go to the extremes is really my thought of the middle way where you don't have all or nothing it's it's a, it, there's a gray areas that's my thought but yeah I uh, I'm just thankful to be alive and uh, so happy for that we can interface and communicate with people around the world because right now we're broadcasting worldwide we are interplanetary here. That's right. Interdimensional. We're, that's right. We're, yeah. on the, we're on the move. But yeah, great things are happening. And we're streaming throughout the cosmos. Is that all you had to say about the middle way? I think that's about that's, it for that's now. That's everything you could say? <laughs> Like two sentences? Well, I, uh, I've i read a lot of Buddhism. What are the benefits of the mental way? Well, what, what, do, what do you get? Stability, uh, satisfaction, well, calmness. Explain to us what the it's, middle way it's is. It's the calmness. It's not the extremes. You don't want to the, the fastest or the slowest. You want to kind of be in the middle. You don't want to push so hard. Uh, it just If you push a little bit less than really hard, you can relax and uh, have an enjoyable life. Yeah, what I can tell you is the... Um, <laughs> We live uh, based on hormones in these physical bodies that we have, and um, I know some of the people when they get older, they their testosterone kind of decreases That's a little bit. A factor, yes. That may be a a, <laughs> a little factor in the middle way coming out of this gentleman to my left. Yeah. And vitamin D is not a vitamin; it's a hormone. Yeah, he's saying that vitamin D is a hormone, everybody. That's right. Anyway. It's quite true in many ways. So. Um, yeah. We're still alive when we're so still alive. all I can advise to you is don't eat any more tofu because tofu has a lot of estrogen in it, esterols. And uh, so watch what kind of food you eat because you might get more of that middle way, middle way the, thinking. Uh, read the ingredients. Tell me something. Try and stay Tell me something. Preservatives. Where is the middle way in a magnet? If we have a, min a magnet, well, would, a magnet has a positive or negative well, side. Be, uh, Where neutral. is the middle way in the magnet? It would be neutral. There is no neutral position in a magnet. Yeah, yeah, no, right there in is, the middle. There is no neutral position yeah, in a magnet. Yeah. There is no middle to a magnet. If you look at a magnet, uh, it has a north and a south pole. You cannot. You and cannot. In the middle, it has a neutral. No, there is no. There's a flow. No, there's no flow. There's a flow in a magnet. No, it's, a, it's there a, is uh, no <laughs> neutral in a magnet, everybody. Oh yeah. I do not believe Everything that there is a neutral. neutral. No, there is no neutral. There's You're either going up or down. Yeah, but there's a neutral in almost everything. Uh, but but not in a magnet. <laughs> okay, everybody. Yeah, magnetism is a pretty awesome thing. Nah, uh, okay. And the atoms are lined up. Right on, Michael. Right on, Michael. Yeah. Well, we got some clouds rolling in. Check this out. Wow. Yeah, we we got some big we got some big clouds moving in there, everybody. Power right now. See how they're 
coming right up to the tower. I'm gonna hit the sun. Look at this. Yeah, I know of a guy named Dan Pena, D-A-N-P-E-N-A, -E and he always talks about how his testosterone level is over a thousand. Oh boy. You want that good <laughs> testosterone. He's got like six times the normal middle way person's testosterone. <laughs> I would see that as an extreme. He's in one of the extremes there. <laughs> he's enjoying life is what he's doing. Yes. I don't know if that high testosterone is, is natural or unnatural. Because I know Dan Pena does have some replacement elbows and knees. You want that good stuff. He's man. been pretty hard on his body. So I don't I don't know if it's healthy to have that kind of excessive testosterone. But yeah. Dropped, yeah, the, the temperature just increased. dropped, everybody. Yeah. It's good to be alive, though. And the wind increased. All right. A lot of and we, I just got some rain, everybody. So it is starting to rain. A lot of activity around here. Sprinkle. sprinkle. Yeah, all I can say, Mule Skinner, is if you ever do any meditation, then uh, some Mule Skinner says, Overall, it's just as vain to assume that there is a God as to assume there isn't. Let's stop, guys, please. Yep, I got gotcha. you. I understand where you're coming from, Mule Skinner, but I heartily, I heartily <laughs> disagree with you. As long as he's passionate about it. Yeah, as long as you're passionate. Yeah, just keep the passion going. That's what we're excited keep about. Keep the passion going. That's right. Keep the passion Live, live the way you want to live. I know Paul has been doing more meditation than I have, but I, I, I'm living with the uh, universal all the time. I'm in the cosmos, and I'm enjoying it. We're all in the cosmos. We don't realize it. But like I was saying earlier about the meteor showers, uh, we're traveling at 66,000 miles an hour right now, everybody. But you can't tell it, you can't feel it, except during what I discovered, a meteor shower. During the meteor shower, you're actually watching us going through this dust cloud. On the same day every year, these meteor showers happen. So that means that it's the Earth that's moving, causing those streaks of light in the night sky. It's fantastic how quick we're moving around the sun. Otherwise, we'd spiral down into the sun. But yeah, we've been going around for billions of years and hopefully a few more billions. All right, Neil Skinner says, I meditate too. That was more of a joke. <laughs> I stand, what is that? Paul's not joking. I'm He's... not joking, but Neil Skinner says, I am correct. Awesome, we are, we are on the same page, Neil Skinner. Hey, Mr. JN on crypto. All right. Okay, Fenwell says to Ocean Camera Space Corp. Paul, Ocean Cam, I did instrument control calibration at a pharmaceutical company. And yes, I think the estrogen screwed me up. All right. <laughs> there you go. He needs more testosterone. No, you just need to be left alone. You don't need any of that outside chemicals. Unless, you know, sometimes you need that to, you know, some people are disabled in certain ways. So. I do respect that. You need to do what you need to do, but do what's best for you. Yeah, yeah do what's best for you. And watch your preservatives. Yeah, if you're, if you're so many preservatives in the food. Now. If you're a woman, you shouldn't be. No, I don't want to tell you about testosterone and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, whatever so your doctor tells you to do, then I'm for that. So, well, you have I'm to be not a doctor, than the everybody. Doctor. You I'm, have to be better than the. I'm doctor. not a doctor. So. I'm not a medical doctor. I have no. Uh, but I read a lot. Medical. Um, don't listen to me. Yeah, you need to be more healthy than the doctors because uh, yeah. the doctors will help you at certain times, but you need to stay healthy. Sometimes the doctor just needs a new a new car payment. Yeah, boat boat payment. Boat payment. Yeah. But yeah, the um, the preservatives in our food is really causing us a lot of trouble. When I was young, there were uh, there were no people. Hardly anyone was overweight. Uh, there was no computers. They didn't have any food when you were young, right? And they had food. Well, what, too, right? It was, it was all natural food. There were no, uh, there were no uh, genetically modified foods. There was no high fructose corn syrup. There was corn syrup. Well, we're on the same same page oh, with yeah, that. Venting, 
down we here. We got some venting over at the back. Yeah, we got some exciting venting going on. That's the oxygen too. We got oxygen venting. Let's get out the binoculars. And the sun's back out again. Hey Robert, I can tell you that I have a very limited number of bills here. I have the cell phone that we're streaming on. I've got the BOD I have the modem that we're also streaming on. Those two bills cost $145, $150 a month. And then I have my rent, which is about $600 a month. So those are all my bills. If I am going to be coming out here to the SpaceX launch site, it does cost about $15 a day for the round trip, including maintenance on the truck and everything. So. Those are my bills, and then I like to eat some food too. So he likes to eat. I have a very limited number of bills compared to many other businesses. Many businesses have a, a monthly budget of fifteen thousand dollars in expenses. The total expenses here at Ocean Camera Space Corp, depending on how much I drive back and forth here to the launch site, and depending on how much I eat food, it's about fifteen hundred dollars a month. So that's very limited. You know, that's like that's not even welfare. I don't pay rent, <laughs> and I don't have an electric bill, <laughs> pretty much off the grid. Well, you don't live stream either, right? I don't live stream. But and But you do have uh, gas and food. I do read a lot, and I uh, I do have gas. You got books. Book expenses <laughs> are pretty high. <laughs> See, Jim over here is living a very um, frugal frugal lifestyle. Yeah, but awesome. It's just so awesome to be off the grid and have no rent, and I'm free. So if you would like to get Ocean Cam into that awesome low expense rate help me buy a satellite help me buy an rv he needs a truck camper yeah and then i will have minimal expenses because i will own the satellite that's right and i won't have to pay uh, monthly bills that's right you want to get off the grid as soon as you want to help do. me reduce my expenses he's got his solar panel help me buy a satellite you need a solar and get panel a couple cameras up there a couple solar panels. and then i won't have to live stream from here on the earth <laughs> He's on Mars. And then I'll be really frugal. So we'll be on Mars. Yeah. What a wonderful world. This is the best time to be alive. It's just a wonderful time to be alive. The world is pretty much at peace. And we have it. We can find out information from around the world. If there's any kind of uh, snag or anything going on in the world, we have our attention can be focused yeah. on that. Juan, thank you, Juan. Yes, I would like to buy an RV camper, a travel camper. I think it would cost around... Um, for the camper itself, it'd be about five, six thousand dollars, and then for the truck to pull the camper, it'd be about thirty-five thousand dollars. So we can reduce the expenses here if we get about um, fifty thousand dollars, and I can buy the camper. And he'll take donations. And I'll take donations for the gas. If somebody has a donation for the camper, even he'll uh, take for the, the camper, camper too. If anyone doesn't want to sell me a camper or, or wants to give us a camper at Ocean truck. Cam. Or truck, four-wheel drive would be better, because <laughs> we'll, we're going to need a truck That's and right. a camper. That's right. And then some gas, dude. Yeah. If you have a, if you have a, a lease on an oil, some property with oil, or if you own some property with oil, yes, then you can give that lease to Ocean Cam, and then we would That's be able right. to extract the oil. We wouldn't, and then maybe separate the gasoline. And we wouldn't have to buy gasoline at the at the and you would be at totally the store. off the grid. And then we would be off grid. We, Paul we, ha, Paul we would a, further reduce. Paul has such a expenses. wonderful imagination. He, <laughs> we appreciate Paul's imagination and his passion. He is uh, not hardworking, but he is passionate for what he does. And he's got Thank you, Robert. Place. Robert is on track with us getting a satellite and, to reduce uh, the bills. And, Paul has a uh, bright future. He has a lot going on, and he's out here. See you, buddy. Taking off. He's he's on the move. He's even got the SpaceX on the back of there. Oh, yeah. uh, he's too fast for me to get that shot. So I'm gonna uh, zoom out here soon too. We got some wind picking up here, everybody. Yeah. Crosswind. We got a crosswind going on here. Well, the um, temperature is about 70 degrees, wind chill 69. I'm sure a lot of we people would like a... to reduce their expenses by getting a satellite. So. Or, or some of your solar panels. Or, oh, yeah, we do have some solar yeah, panels here. If, if you get some of those solar panels, you can cut your... If you uh, want to buy a truckload of solar panels, we can ship them to you for about 
six hundred dollars. Depends on where you're at. Maybe forty. If you want to buy forty solar panels, we can sell it to you. If it's close, uh, we'll be free delivery. But if you're close, you can pick them up for free. That's right. And it'll be about two hundred and fifty cash or. 275 if you buy it through eBay. And you need a couple batteries and a, and a charge controller. Yeah, and so the, yeah. And then you're made. The deal with solar panels is um, once you get the solar panels, usually you have to buy something to, you have to buy a battery as well, like a deep cycle battery because. I have uh, two it, deep cycle golf cart batteries it, that I use. The thing about deep cycle batteries is um, if you have just a car battery, then if that, no, if you have just a, a car battery, yeah. A car battery, if it dies a few times, then it's then it's dead. But you, if you, you don't dare reduce them down to about 40 percent. The thing about deep cycle batteries is you can you can drop them to zero, and um, they'll they'll many of them will recharge 300 times. Well, even a deep cycle it, lead acid, you only want to take down to about 40 percent. Okay, but they can't survive if you go to zero. It's not no. dead. No. Yeah, no, it's pretty well so, shot. Okay, you so can really hurt a battery if you go below 40 percent. Okay, it's lead acid. All right, so if it's lead acid, everyone. No, some of the other ones you can take down. So don't get a lead acid battery, everybody. Well, it's, there's a lot cheaper though. They're a little heavier. All right, if you want to save money but also risk uh, <laughs> killing your battery, get a lead acid Especially battery. Especially if it's been overcast for four days here, it was overcast. I didn't have a whole lot of juice for four days. Can you put a lead? Can you put a deep cycle battery in a car or a truck? Sure. All right, so if you want to save your vehicle, maybe get a, a deep cycle battery. Yeah. The, the benefit of that is it can um, it can it can get recharged many 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 times. Uh, that's the benefit of the uh, of using a deep cycle battery in your solar panel setup. So you'll need one of those batteries in addition to um, an, an inverter and, and a controller and a con and a, con a charger bolt. There goes the nitrogen truck. So I believe we got about 31 solar panels. If you're coming through or, or leaving the Brownsville area, we got them right there in Brownsville. And you can uh, contact us here at Ocean Cam or through the Ocean Camera Space website, oceancam.space. We got a. Um, it's a good deal. Yeah, it's a really good deal, everybody. Uh, they are slightly used, but they're still highly efficient. And uh, they lose about 0.25 of a percent per year. So you're getting really top-notch quality solar panels. If you do live in Texas, we can deliver them to you. Uh, if you live elsewhere, we can ship them to you if you buy enough, because the shipping is still gonna be as expensive as if you buy a lot. Um, but if you live in Florida, we can, we can get them to you. If you live in Texas, we can uh, drive them out to your I'm going back to Indiana in March, probably, so I could take a couple of okay. to Indiana or Michigan. Or any state in between here in, here in Texas. Delivery so. charge. Yeah. All right, so you can make a couple of bucks. That's uh, a possibility. We charge a minimum of $500 for shipping, <laughs> so um, you'll be getting some money for your gas there. Yeah, that's an idea. I can that, get home then. And that's still cheap. It's 500 yeah. for shipping is still cheap, so... Yeah. Um, Deliver to your door. Because you gotta you got to remember that the solar panel ship they ship fl flat on a on a pallet in them, either that or in the truck. So if we can just truck them to you, uh, or if we could drive them to you here in Texas, or if you'd like us to install them, we can install them for you as well. Nathan is a an engineer as well. Uh, Jim here is an engineer, and I know installation fees can go up five, ten thousand dollars just to get the stuff installed. And even then, they usually a lot of times. Uh, sometimes the installer, even if they're professional, will mess up the installation and give you an inverter or a charger that's not rated for the solar panels that you have. So it is a difficult thing sometimes to get the right equipment and the cost can get really excessive. So we, we, we are somewhat experienced here at Ocean Camera Space Corp installing the panels and you can see in addition to not only installing an awesome solar setup and getting off grid, uh, Nathan, if you look at the OceanCam.Space website, there's a link to his website, and he, he has a deal where he'll give you a quote on installing not only the solar panels, but a blockchain crypto miner system. So you can make money through your solar panel installation uh, because it'll run your, your miner, mining system. Cool. So there's a, there's a link to his website. You can learn more about that. and ask him for a quote and whether you buy the solar panels or just use his system 
Uh, we got a couple. We got you. We got you set up for here. We got a good setup. You can make. Um, I believe he makes about seventy dollars a day or so mining off of his uh, uh, system, his uh, solar charger mining system. So now, if you buy two panels, it'll probably be about eight hundred watts. You'll need about a sixty-five amp charge controller to uh, hold that amount of, of energy. Oh, I got a hundred amp charger. But uh, you need a minimum of 65 amp. Oh, the amperage gets up there, yeah. 800. It's a so big system. The gauge yeah. on that wire is six gauge or something, or lower, or something gauge well, lower. No, you, you can actually use like an eight gauge. Yeah, depending on how many you have to look. Yeah, okay, right, eight right, or right, okay. Right. Yeah, but the uh, 400. Uh, if you, each panel is uh, so many watts, and you kind of add up the wattage. If you have a thousand watt blender, you might want three solar panels. But if you have um, uh, that would be like a Vitamix, but if you have uh, whatever you want to run, you, you can, can get an inverter to take the 12 volts up to 110 volts and right the voltage, but the wattage. Um, sometimes you, you need a higher wattage than just uh, one solar panel. Yeah, it would depend on your batteries then to invert it into 110. Oh, really? You can you can uh, you can load up a battery over time and then uh, right, have right. brief moments of high wattage out of the battery. That's right. Awesome. All right. Robert says there's an upcoming launch of the NROL in hour. They're going to do that SpaceX launch from Vandenberg Air Force Base in wow. Western California. I don't know. I've been educated here on Ocean Cam. I don't know how Elon can get all his projects working. If you watch the Ocean Cam channel long enough, you'll pick up some of this stuff just like I have. Uh, we're all learning together. And um, if anyone's learning, maybe I'm learning. I don't know. They say Elon is worth 300 billion. That's 300,000 million. But not anymore, because there's about a week ago they the little, crypto yeah. market crashed, and he lost about 27 billion dollars. But 300 billion is 200, 300,000 million. 273 billion. Yeah, there was a there was a sad day recently, and um, here comes another uh, lift. For those who weren't on the inside, they they got they lost a little bit of money. I think it's the same guy that went by a bit ago. <laughs> this guy's going around in circles, everybody. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Yeah, this guy is up there, man. He's a transporter. Neil Skinner, yes, I would love to get a camper if anyone wants to donate a Ocean Camera Space Corp. We can transfer the ownership to the Ocean Camera Space Corp business, and uh, we can uh, have an official Ocean Cam RV. Yeah, then he could be spend more time out here. It'd be a lot easier. He either, could be off the grid. Yeah, either that or he could donate seventy-four thousand dollars in cash. <laughs> I won't tell anybody you gave it to me. Or maybe um, maybe through uh, Zell, you could sell Zell us seventy four thousand dollars. There you go. And we could uh, we could uh, get a camper. That's right. I'll tell you, it's a good life. Freedom. Freedom from rent and electricity, man. Yeah, maybe a lift arm on the camper too. Says Michael. Good, good, good. Hey, you kind of build it out the way you want it. Yeah, then we could uh, make put it the way you want. Make it, it the way we like it. You could put a chair way up high if you wanted, or a tower. Yeah. We're trying to get one of those, uh, I don't know if any of y'all saw the uh, Contact, <laughs> the movie Contact. You know that billionaire or whatever was up there in the clouds with the ship? Oh boy. Remember that? That's what we need here at Ocean Cam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, either that or if we could save a little money, if we get our, uh, if we can get our airship over there to Venus, we could just sit up there in the clouds and... Or a kite. And we, we can save a, some money over there going here. In, the, in, the, in the atmosphere of Venus. Hot air balloon. I don't know if we can get a kite cam working. Maybe we could do that. Is that still a drone? Is that a drone if, you have a, if you're flying a kite with nope. a camera attached to it? No. Nope. That's, 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 a, that's a dirigible. We could get some shake stabilization. Or I've a, seen people flying kites over here to the left. A hot air balloon. Oh, yeah? Yeah, maybe we could. Uh, maybe that would be illegal. Legal. They got rules. We'd have to have a wide angle lens on that. It's just amazing that we can be so close to these rockets and all this construction. And uh, you know, there's no power out here. They must have all generators and solar power because there's no wires running out here to the beach. 
Okay, uh, Aaron says we need a UV proof umbrella. That's right. I, or a tarp. Yeah, that's pretty good. Thanks, Aaron. A kite with a GoPro for flight stability, says one. Nice. All right, these are all the... So if somebody would like to donate a kite to Ocean Cam, that will be one step closer to getting that, that Ocean Camera Kite Cam live. Go kite Cam, there you and go. And then we would also need somebody to donate a GoPro camera or a big chunk of cash. <laughs> we want to take care of Ocean Cam. We like, we like gold here, too. He's so out if, here and he's if you want to send some gold coins. He's got a passion and he's got a... Uh, there's emergency operations. Yeah. But yeah, he's, and he's got imagination. Getting of the soil over by the um, by the methane tanks. Well, Taz, yeah, nice to see you here. Swiss, Switzerland. Doing good, Well, Taz. Nice. I believe, I believe, uh, Switzerland is where the uh, the pharaohs from Egypt relocated. The rulers of the world, I believe, live over there in Switzerland. Egyptian leaders? I mean, ancient Egyptians. Okay, if we could train a, a heron. Bye. That is a good idea. If we could train, that might be still considered a drone, everybody. <laughs> if we have <laughs> pigeons and we attach cameras to them. That's it. They may, they may still consider that a drone. Cam. We might get in trouble if they find that drone. <laughs> uh, we could get a hawk or a uh, buzzard. Yeah, I think we would get in trouble for that. Yeah. Hawkeye. Aaron, good thinking, though. Good thinking. You guys are thinking, man. You guys got a good imagination. Anyway, there's a, there's some, I, I haven't been following, but there's something called Nassara, Nassar and Gessara. And that is like the, the global reset, the big jubilee. Oh. And uh, I don't know, they were talking about that a couple years ago, and it turned out to be bogus. Uh -huh. But maybe that's still in the works. Maybe we can um, have uh, not, not trillions of dollars, not quadrillions of dollars, pentillions and sextillions of dollars released to the public to to renew and re regenerate the whole planet and to uh, to change uh, the story of humanity. Wow. Yeah. Pentillion, octillion, nonillion, decillion. I've got an octillion amount of money here too. <laughs> Just send me a few dollars and I'll, I'll send some some of those octillion dollar bills to you. Octo, man, that's like an octopus. <laughs> We're getting crazy now. Been All in right. the sun too long. Well, we've managed to lose about 60 people. Oh boy. Well, we're pretty relaxed up here. We're, we're in the middle way. <laughs> On Decatillion. Endica is 11. So 11 trillion. 11 zeros. 11, yes. yeah. Endica trillion. And Decatillion. I like that. How high can you count? Yep. Neil Skinner says, a weather balloon, helium. I did that years ago before drones were popular. Helium is the expensive part and loss of a camera, of course. Okay. Yeah, helium's getting pretty, pretty expensive now, I guess. Uh, gazillion, I like that one. Maybe we can get a, uh, we can fill a, uh, we could fill a balloon with helium, attach a disposable camera to it and just let it go off. Like a Brazilian, that, you know how many in a Brazilian? <laughs> That's <laughs> from Brazil. All right, all right, okay. All right, everybody. We're gonna wind it down here. Send about a Brazilian. <laughs> How about a reptilian? Yeah. Oh, that's a that's an animal. What? 
of activity today. A lot of things going on. Awesome. Well, Tez says his son's uh, three years old in a couple weeks. In a week. Happy birthday a little early. Yep. Happy birthday a little early. One more time around the sun. And the stars on his birthday will be in the same position they were the day he was born. Yeah. We don't do any snaking around here at Ocean Cam, so no. Can't do that. We don't do any snaking around. No, well, we're out and about. Look at the cables on that. The cables are moving a little bit. I don't know if they're, the, uh, they're going to lift it. If they're lifting it now yeah, or not. Yeah, they're going to lift it. It's getting more taut, everybody. So we might be observing the lift of the GSE-4. Yes. Remains of the GSE-4 tank, everybody. They had the torches out this morning. Oh, that's a good shot. Yeah, the cables are getting even ta tauntier than they were just a few minutes ago. A lot of construction. I think they're getting ready for a March 3rd launch. be ready by March 3rd. They got a month. This is a short month. It's not a uh, leap year. How many how many months have 28 days? All of them. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just pulling a number out of his head. I think anywhere between March and, and June. Yeah. And I think this setup will go because they got the covers on the booster. They got the, all the tiles on the Starship. I think 420 is going to make it. We'll see. They do have the new Raptor 2 engines coming out. When's your birthday? Oh, we don't want to talk about birthday. Is it right. April? Right? April 29, yeah. Coming up, Taurus. Taurus. How many areas is a Taurus, everybody? And yours is uh, February? That's close enough. You got a birthday coming up, bud. No, I don't. Yeah. If you don't have a birthday coming up, then you're dead. Today is my birthday. Today? Yep, today. Wow, oh, happy birthday, man. <laughs> really? I woke up today in this body. It's my birthday. Oh, it's a day of birth. I was born in this body today. That's right. A new day. Every day is a new day, everybody. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, too. Happy very young birthday to you as well. <laughs> the ancient Egyptians believed you became a star when you died. And that's why everybody wanted to be a star. They uh, had their ancestors looking down on them. They thought that was their ancestors up there. Juan says uh, his birthday is in November. November, everybody. Happy birthday, Juan. Yeah, happy birthday, Rupert, and everybody else here. Stay warm, everybody. If you're up north, you want to stay warm. It's a little breezy here today, probably in the upper 60s uh, on the Fahrenheit scale. What is that, 10 or 12 degrees uh, Celsius, probably? Uh, Celsius is the whole worldwide has went Celsius, except a few people in America haven't went to the, the uh, metric system. But all doctors, all science, everything here is in the metric system. All uh, well, I military. Forty-seven one. Good, good on you. In November. And metric is much simpler, really. Uh, it freezes at zero, boils at a hundred. It makes sense. Plus one cubic centimeter of water, of pure distilled water, is one gram. So you have a, a relationship between mass and volume.
We got some music out here. I don't know if y'all hear music, but I can't hear it. If you can, uh, let me know, and I'll have to mute the mic. We are the welcoming committee. Thanks, Nadal. Gracias. We are the town caller. If people want to wave, we wave. We are on top of the world. Hey, Robert, it depends on who asked me to go. If SpaceX asked me to go to Mars, I would say yes. If Blue Origin asked me to go to Mars, I'm, I'll probably say yes. Uh, if somebody who doesn't have a rocket asked me to go to Mars, I'd probably say no. Just because I don't want it to explode on me. If, if NASA asked me if I want to go to Mars, I'd say no. I might, I might end up dead. Now. Yeah. I, I like it right here. But if, if SpaceX was going to Mars and they said, hey, Elon's going too, I would say yes. I'm not going. <laughs> I like it right here. What a beautiful Earth we have. Thanks, Bill Skinner. Thank you. The Earth yeah. is made just specifically for us. So if NASA asked me to go to Mars, um, I would say no. No, they're going to have to live in, a, in a underground. They're nobody wants to. I don't think they want to live underground. To uh, prevent any radiation, they're going to have to build an underground fort. Cool. Um, I think we need to go to the moon first, anyway. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. It's. We need to get the uh, water. There's water on the poles, and there's big source of water on Mars. Wow, that guy's in a hurry. He wants to get that nitrogen yeah. back to the refill. He unloaded already. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to refill. Oh, all right, everybody. Well, that tank's not lifting up yet, but they're getting close, I think. Maybe they got to balance it first or something. They're doing a lot of lifting uh, action today. A lot of lifts are connecting. Yeah, we're explorers, that's right. It's amazing what people can do. Uh, yeah, so we did talk about the metric and all that the last stream. Yes. We talked excessively, not you. You weren't in the stream, but oh, okay. over there at the main gate, we talked about that quite a bit. Yeah, metric is so much simpler and so much better. Yeah, I don't agree, but that's fine. You like you like the old British system? Ah, uh, we don't need to. Uh, I like, yeah, anyway. The British don't even use it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what do they use in India? Do they use meters? and Everything's uh, metric in the whole world. What do they know? There are five countries, five locations where they use the metric. No, it isn't. Helena said earlier. No, there's maybe two countries that, that don't. Five. I believe there's five. I don't think so. Anyway. Here comes our friend again. He's coming by with another hoist. Uh, He's back again with another piece of equipment. This guy is really moving some uh, voice around. those going or something yeah they're moving stuff around today we got some wind picking up here as well well the last thing to go probably of uh, the old British system will be a hundred foot hundred yard football game you know that they're always going to have a hundred yards I might have to get out of here go to town to eat something I gotta remember to bring food when I come here early. You don't eat wheat? What, what do you eat? I got a banana. Nah, that's cool. Nice, you. Nice. They 
think I'm gonna make some rice. Some, um, boil some rice. Oh, I got rice. What's some rice? I can make Thanks. Thank you, though. There goes emergency operations. Yep. Hello, Tesla. A lot of Teslas down here. I talked to one guy the other day. He invested in Tesla stock yeah. in 2017. Yeah. Put 20,000 down. Yeah. It's worth a million five. Yeah. A few years later. Lots of action. Let's see what time it is. I'm going to check at the time. 1:38 in the afternoon. Thanks, Mike. Fenwolf says the Imperial system is in the U.S., Liberia, and the Myanmar. Yeah, that's only three. Yeah, so that's more than two. Helena had uh, five. Two other ones. Helena said there were no, five. I think there's five. So, anyway, there's more than two. Yeah, there's three. Okay. <laughs> and a few weathermen in America. What do they use out there in those specific islands? There's a lot of countries in the, in the world. There's over 200 countries. Not all metric. Uh, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's pretty interesting. That uh, makes sense. They may use seashells in some of these countries. Or and, stones, uh, yeah. Stones. Starlink launch, which begins at 1:45 in the afternoon. Oh, you think so? Is that soon? Is that like any moment now? So it's 1.39 Central Time here. We were doing the countdown to the launch at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Oh, yeah. But when does the Starlink launch happen as well? Is that on the same uh, rocket out of Vandenberg? Yeah. Is that going to be a different launch or is that the uh, the Vandenberg one? Michael Maxey. make that permanent that scrolling uh no i i'd like to the good question i never thought of that no, no, yeah the good there must be a setting somewhere. that'd be awesome if i could do that yeah i'd like to i'd like to chat here on the screen and i know that can be done if i if i use obs right. and do a screen uh, capture a display uh so maybe i might do that in the future since i am live streaming well, i'm not i'm not live streaming on this so yeah with my, my laptop I need my life. Yeah, yeah. Or the uh, if I were using the StreamYard software, then uh, we could do that. But yeah, you know how to do it. Man. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. You I don't know. Experience. I don't know how to do that. And now it's uh, more overcast. The sun is pretty much under the under the clouds now. So okay. Yeah, the sun. We're, we're now getting a little more breezy. Setting in. Uh, so the uh, the word here is that the um, the Starlink has been rescheduled till tomorrow. The sun is behind the clouds now up there. And the Vandenberg uh, launch is supposed to be happening soon. Yeah. There is some type of... Uh, there's some venting over by the tank farm, oral tank farm, and that's that pressure release sound that we're hearing. Um, Uh, Arcful asks if welding works in space or not, or in the Mars atmosphere. That's an awesome question, Arcful. I know there's welding under the ocean, uh, you know, so they can weld in the, you know, underneath the ocean here on the Earth. So, does anyone know if they can weld in space? I, I would think that the the, the sparks. Yeah, there, there'd be no reason why they couldn't. Okay, really? Unless they were arcing between the two metals. Okay, so arcing between the two metals. They wouldn't want to use that near the space capsule, though, or near a space suit. Any oxygen, yeah. Because uh, if, if you don't want to burn a hole in your space suit or your spacecraft. But uh, 
Ja. <lacht> Michael says, uh, Michael Maxis says, uh, SpaceX is marketing a Starlink premium service, five times the standard price. Awesome. What kind of, you know, when they, when I first got access to Starlink out here, we were getting much faster speeds than we're getting now at the MSX location. We we're getting about, uh, we we're getting really fast speeds over there. And uh, I think they've downgraded, they've downgraded or downshifted the service. I could be wrong. I might not. I, might, I may be incorrect about this, but we were getting like 100, uh, 100 megs upload and download. So, and I, I think one of them is now about 10 or 20, 20 um, gigs, 20 megs. I'm, I'm not sure if it's megs or gigs, but we we're getting 20, and now it's like uh, we we're getting 100, and now it's 20. So um, they've downshifted, and maybe that's so that they can offer the premium servers at the previous faster rate. Would make sense when they were just coming out with the Starlink. That may be true. I may be incorrect about that, but I, I believe they have downshifted or downgraded the service of the Starlink so that maybe, maybe so that they can handle the the uh, the barrage of um, signups, but also maybe so that they can offer a more expensive premium service. Birdman. Birdman says the Starlink launches 22 hours after today's. And Arkful, thanks. That was a good, awesome, uh, good idea and uh, good question. Yeah, I wonder how they can, uh, how they do it. If they do uh, weld in space, how do they do it? You know? Falcon 9 launch in 30 minutes. It's a classified spy satellite. Classified spy satellite, which means it's probably one of those uh, ones with the lasers where they can zap you and uh, make you make you non non-existent near on the surface of the earth. Around, boy. Track you around like they did with the um, with all those um, action movies that you can watch on um, one says, of those uh, flicks. Three, three eighteen Eastern Standard Time, so it'll be two eighteen. Here. NSF going live in five minutes, so covering about, the West Coast. About a half hour to go yet. See, we may have to end the stream here in five minutes so that so that we can go watch the NSF stream in five minutes. Yeah. I can assure you that I will not be watching the NSF stream. But um, I may go watch the NASA stream. It's 318 Eastern. I'm, I may go watch the NASA stream. So it's two. But I will not watch the NSF stream. Okay. <laughs> Is that a little protest? <laughs> Anyway, all in good fun. All in good fun. It's a classified NROL-87 satellite for the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office. Okay, Vandenberg is for polar orbital launches. That's good. Thanks, Michael. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Happy birthday to everybody, says Robert P.M. Awesome. Awesome. Nice comment there. All right. Groundhog's Day. So give us a recap on the Groundhog, Groundhog Day and, and how it turned out today. Well, let me look it up because I, uh, I'm part uh, cyborg. Norwegian? I can... Uh, Cy I can, cyborg. I, I have a computer right here. All right. The... Um, Hooks a Tony Phil. If, if so, you don't know, there, there's a movie called Groundhog Day, and today Michael Maxey says today is Groundhog Day, and it is Groundhog Day, and Punks a Tony Phil was not, um, was not the subject of today's Groundhog Day, nor was, um, uh, you know, the guy in the movie, what was his name? Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, he's one of my favorite actors. Um, ASCS Russ SCS Tech. But anyway, so um, today is Groundhog Day, and I believe the shadow was seen, is what I believe. Because I, I remember seeing in the chat earlier that there's another six weeks of winter. Bill Murray. Thank you, Mac Michael. Bill Murray, that's right. Bill Murray, one of my favorite actors. 
I guess there's only one Puxatawney fill so far. All the other groundhogs are imposters. The National Science Foundation is one of my favorite foundations. I don't know about you, but NSF is, uh, they've got a lot of interesting stuff out there. Uh -huh. They've been around a long time. NSF, they've been around a long time, everybody. If Phil does not see his shadow, it's an early spring. I don't know about, is there another NSF? National Science Foundation, right? Right. Na or is it National Space Foundation? National Science Foundation. Science, National Science Foundation, says Jim. Are they covering the launch? National Science Foundation? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think they're going to cover that Vandenberg launch, everybody. Anyway. There's all kinds of uh, people streaming nowadays. Awesome, awesome. Well, Tez, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing, Will Tez. Oh, yeah, Chuck says the welding in space might be a little hard keeping the puddle in place. So the, 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 the concept behind that is when you're, when you're doing welding, you, you form a puddle so that the, the end of the, the weld coming out the, the gun, I don't know what that's called, uh, the, the welding works when there's a contact made between the two pieces of metal. So if you form a puddle with the melted metal, then you can easily keep your gun in the puddle, keeping the circuit. But if, you're, if, you're, if your contact is skipping off the metal and you don't keep it in the puddle, then it's not gonna weld. So the, the liquid metal forms a, a circuit. It, it keeps a circuit while your, your gun, I don't know what that's actually called, but it's skipping around during, you know, during the weld. So that's, a, but in space there, with the gravity might not keep the puddle in the in the one spot. Well, there'd be no uh, there'd be no air to interfere either. Now on Earth, we have to have uh, argon or some inert gas like CO2 to prevent impurities to get in the weld. Like if you're doing a MIG weld, or if you're doing a stick weld, then you have this flux that, that goes over it, and it you have to break that away. But uh, in space, there wouldn't be any impurities, and there would be no air. All right, say that once more, just uh, the first thing that you said. Good. Well, if you're, uh, if you're MIG welding, you've got to have some uh, inert gas, like argon or, or uh, CO2, to prevent the impurities of the oxygen to, to uh, ruin your weld. It won't be a very good weld. It won't weld at all, really. So maybe it'll be a better weld in space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It would be a good weld. Okay. And you wouldn't need any uh, covering gas. But it would be dangerous because you wouldn't want to weld where there'd be no problem with oxygen or any kind of a contact. One of the other interesting things I've heard about space is that I believe on one of the Apollo missions, one of the astronauts injured his arm. He kind of ripped the skin off his almost his whole bone down his arm. And one of the earlier Apollo missions, what they did is they sewed up his arm in space and within 96 hours, it was healed. So if you go into space, the, the fluid moves around differently inside the body and your hormones also act much differently. They're much stronger in space. So the, the body heals a lot quicker. Uh, organizations like NASA don't tell you that information because that's reserved for the people who have money to go up there, the, the elite. They don't want the, the, the small people here on the earth to know that, but up there in space, you do heal a lot faster. And they have also developed a, a diabetes uh, treatment. Uh, one shot in the 1991, Lockheed Martin had it, and they were doing the space, they were a uh, factory up there in space, but it was just too costly and it might, um, it was, uh, they weren't able to get up there in space and do that manufacturing in the public sector, but I can assume that they've uh, developed and, and, and continue with that technology. And they have it if you are a prime minister or if you have someone who's afraid of death, they have that technology and, and those products available for you if you have a billion or more dollars. And in space, also the fluid goes to your upper body and face. If people get puffy face, their eyes, they have trouble with vision sometimes because the fluid doesn't have like gravity pulling it down and on earth 
and you're in space and you have a more fluid uh, build up in your face and upper body. So when we get space up, SpaceX up there with these starships, we really get them up there beyond the low Earth orbit. Um, and we actually get people up there in space with real video cameras that don't cut out when interesting things happen. The real live stream from space, that unedited, then uh, we'll be able to get some to see some of that space technology that the astronauts are prohibited from telling you, because that's again just reserved for the special people uh, who like to control things here on the Earth. So. Anyway, I get I get hangry when I get hungry, and I'm getting hangry, so <laughs> I'm going to end the stream here. You can probably tell when I'm getting hangry and and go eat something we appreciate all that paul's doing for everybody so you can see what he sees and uh we wish him all the best if they had a restaurant out here i would be able to just go in there and eat something and come back out or a supermarket and then i wouldn't get hangry and i could live stream longer do you eat chicken no i don't eat chicken, chicken. i'm a vegetarian everybody all right buddy all right everybody Bye -bye. i'm gonna wrap up the stream we'll close it close it down with this uh fourth the fourth lift to go by us here with the same individual. He's doing laps around the lawn side here. Cosmic Professor out. Cosmic Professor Jim saying goodbye. Happy, happy uh, Groundhog's Day, everybody. Happy Groundhog Day. And here we have the fourth circuit around the launch site. The same guy. The same guy making a lot of trips. He's doing a lot of work, everybody. See you soon. Signing out, Ocean Camera Space Corp. Adios. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. It's been a lot of fun. Educational. And inspirational. That's right. That's how we do it over here at Ocean Cam. Bye-bye.